Rule seven. Rule seven just about killed me. Like, I, I've had a lot of bad health in the last year, and having to rewrite Rule seven coincided with one of those periods that lasted about a month, and it was was the hardest chapter by far, and it went down the deepest by far, and it was really hard to get right. It's called, Do What is Meaningful, Not What is Expedient. And I'll just tell you a little bit about the chapter, because I figured something out in it that, and then explained it, something that took me decades to figure out. So there's this idea, it's a, it's a very deep Christian idea, that the Messiah is the person who takes the world's sins upon himself, right? That's a characteristic of Christ, right? It's, it's something, the idea is something like Christ died for your sins. It's like, what the, what the hell does that mean exactly? You know, and partly what it means, and, and I would say a slightly corrupted form of Christianity, is that you just have to believe that that happened and, the, and you're redeemed. It's like, well, that's, we'll leave that aside for a second. But there's an idea there, a psychological idea. And you know that because the idea doesn't go away. It's lasted for thousands of years. It's like, well, so the idea signifies something. It has a psychological reality independent of its metaphysical reality, whatever that might be. And so I thought about that for a long time. It's like, what in the world does that possibly mean? And then I realized, and Jung knew this, Carl Jung knew this, that it was associated with this idea of the shadow. Um, I had this client once who, oh, her parents, man, they were pieces of work. She, her parents taught her, I swear to you that this is the truth. Her parents taught her that adults were angels, literally. And when I saw her, she was about 30, and she had a lot of strange symptoms, symptoms of sorts I'd never seen, uh, psychosomatic symptoms. Um, she, she, uh, she had kind of like quasi-epileptic seizures at night, and, you know, but she stayed conscious during them. It was very difficult to understand it, and I, I won't walk through it, but her parents told her that adults were angels. And, uh, and she was like... 28, and she had a university degree, and, and I said, well, didn't you ever like, wonder about that? I said, didn't you read any history? And she said, yeah, but I read something about the terrible things that people did to each other, and I would just compartmentalize it. And that was actually the key that I used to unlock what was wrong with her, which was eventually fixed, and I won't go into that. But, but I said, I gave her this book, I gave her two books, I gave her a book called... Uh, the Terror That Comes in the Night, which is a book about, um, about sleep paralysis and nightmares, because I thought that was what might have been bothering her. It turned out that wasn't it. Then I gave her this other book called Ordinary, Ordinary Men. And it's a great book. Uh, it's a terrible book, a terrible, dark book, about, about this police battalion that was moved into Poland during World War II after the Nazis had marched through. And it was all made of middle-aged guys who weren't like victims of Nazi totalitarian propaganda when they were kids. They were just, you know, bourgeois middle class guys, kind of like all of us, let's say. Um, and they went to, to police Poland and um, they were going to have to do some terrible things, essentially. But their commander told them quite forthrightly that if being involved in wartime policing was too hard on them, if they felt that it ethically violated them or psychologically violated them, they could just go back to policing in Germany. And very few of them did, partly because they didn't want to abandon their comrades, let's say. They didn't want them to have to do the dirty work, you know. And they ended up, they were normal policemen, they ended up the sorts of people who could take naked pregnant women out into the middle of the field and shoot them in the back of the head. That's how the book, that's the culmination of their training. It's very interesting to read about their training because they were absolutely sickened by what they learned to do. Like physically sickened, vomiting, shaking, traumatized, but they didn't stop. And, and if you want to know why, then you can read the book. And I said, look, read this book, but don't bloody well compartmentalize it. Enough of that. It's like, read it like you're one of the damn policemen, which is how you should read history. Right? You read about Nazi Germany and you think, well, I'm Oskar Schindler. I'd save the Jews. It's like, no, you wouldn't. Right. You wouldn't, because people didn't. And the probability is very high that you wouldn't. And all you have to do is think it through. You know, Anne Frank, it's like, you're really going to put your family at risk to hide a group of another family in your attic for, like, multiple years while there's Nazis parading the street and where, if you get exposed, you all die. You're going to do that, are you? It's, like, very unlikely. And, and, and no wonder, it's not surprising that it's unlikely, but you don't want to be inflating yourself with self, you know, with, with fictional heroism without actually knowing the facts on the ground. So I told her to read, read it and to understand that 
the policemen were her. And, and that's the thing to understand. Well, the idea that the Savior is the person who takes the world's sins upon himself is exactly that. It's exactly the same idea. It's like, the way that there stops being Nazis is for you to know that the Nazis were you and for you to decide not to do that again. But you have to know, you see, this is the thing that people won't do. You have to understand that you could not only do what the Nazi camp guards did in Auschwitz, but that you could actually enjoy it. And then you have to decide that you're not going to do that anymore. And that's not an easy thing to figure out. Well, and that's what that chapter is about. So that's a rough chapter, man. That's a rough chapter. And that's only a bit of what it's about. You know, there, there's, a lot of, there's a lot in there. And, and that's... Anyways, that's what that's about.